In the Herbert Aptheker's article, Maroon Within the Present Limits of the United States, there's a part that says, in October 1862, a scouting party of three armed whites investigating a maroon camp containing 100 men, women, and children in Surrey County, Virginia, were killed by these fugitives. In the context of the other stories that's presenting, I made the assumption that this was a group of people uh, living in a swamp and um, cut and dry. When the search party came looking for them, they got killed. But the actual story is a bit more interesting. It's in the Virginia State Papers, and that's the one I'll be reading. So the background of the story is that this took place on Jamestown Island. The main people who were involved were from Surrey, the search party. And it took place on the property of William Orgain Allen. According to his obituary, he was the richest man in Virginia previously. And he had actually had his own private militia who attempted to uh, fight with the Union. Later they withdrew and abandoned that island. So he sent some people to go check on his properties. And this is the story about those who went there to check on his properties through the uh, viewpoint of free man of color, Gilbert Wooten. The following deposition of Gilbert Wooten, free man of color, in regard to the killing of J.M. Shriver, a citizen of the Kingdom of Great Britain, James A. Graves, and George Graves of Surrey County, Virginia, and the shooting with intent to kill of said Wooten, was taken before me, W.J. Burt, a justice of the County of Surrey and State of Virginia, at Claremont in the said county, uh, this 25th day of October, 1862. Who went with you to Jamestown Island and on what day did you go? Answer, on Monday last, on Monday morning last, Mr. Shriver and Littleton, Mr. Shriver's slave, started in a boat from Claremont along with me. We went to Mr. Graves. Mr. Graves was not then at home. We waited until his return and about 4 p.m. the same day, Mr. Graves and his nephew, George Graves, got in the boat with us, and we then crossed the river to Jamestown. What time did you get to Jamestown? About 5 p.m. We landed near the old ruins. Whom did you see on the island? Nobody when we first landed. Mr. Shriver, Mr. Graves, George Graves, and Littleton went ashore and walked towards the great house. I heard some talking towards the bridge which crosses the neck of land and saw seven Negro men coming towards the boat, all armed with guns. George Thomas and Norborn Baker, two of the seven, got in the boat with me. The other five, William Parsons, Henry Moore, Jesse, Alec, and Mike, went down the shore towards the great house, which was about a quarter of a mile below where we landed. What did they say to you? Joe Parsons said, Wooten is the very boy we have long time been wanting. Did you know these men before? Oh yes, I knew them all. They were slaves of Mr. William Allen and lived at Neck of Land. What did George Thomas and Norborn Baker say and do to you? Norborn Baker asked me if when I came there I expected to go back home again. I told him yes I did. He said he didn't think I would go back. They then took me in the boat around the upper end of the island to the bridge as you go to Neck of Land and ordered me to sit on the bridge. Did you hear any firing on the island during this time? While going around in the boat, I heard the report of four guns. When Norman said, boys, they have either got them or they have got them one. That was not a rifle. Did you see Shriver and Graves again? Yes. The five Negroes, William Parsons, Henry Moore, Jesse, Alec, and Mike, brought them and Littleton back to the bridge where I was. Did Mr. Shriver and Mr. Graves have any guns in their hands when they were brought to the bridge? No. Mike had Mr. Shriver's and Alec had Mr. Graves. They were double barrel birding guns. What did the Negroes then do with you all? They marched us up the neck of land to the great house where Mr. Emery used to live. 
what took place at that house. We were stopped at the yard gate and placed under guard of Mike and Alec. The other five Negroes went to the house door and were met by a Negro named Windsor, a slave belonging to somebody in the neighborhood. I could not hear what they had said until Windsor asked, is that Gilbert? I said, yes. Windsor said, I've got no use for you here. I've been a long time wanting you. After waiting a little for Mr. Graves, said, come in. Who is your captain? Do what you're going to do. If you're going to send us to Williamsburg, please send us at once or let us go home. Do what you're going to do. It is getting very late. Nobody answered him at all. In five or six minutes after this, that is, after Mr. Graves spoke, they turned a short round and marched us back to the creek to the foot of the bridge next to neck of land. When we got to the bridge, it was about the setting of the sun. How many Negroes did you see at neck of land? Of men, women, and children, about 100. Did you see any whites? None except for the party that went with me. How many went with you from the house to the bridge? About 15 or 20 all numbered, and all slaves of Mr. Allen, except one hireling boy. As well as I can remember, they were named as follows. Jim Diggs, an old man. Jim Diggs again, a uh, young man. Robert Cole, little Henry, Peter, Jeffress, and the seven who carried us from the island, and some youngsters whose names I do not know. The hireling's name I do not know. He used to be hired at Jamestown. He's a low, chunky yellow man. Was there any conversation between the house and the bridge? Mr. Graves asked why the wheat was not threshed out. Henry Moore said they would when they got ready. Mr. Graves also spoke of burning of the houses of Jamestown. Henry Moore asked, what business was it of his? Mr. Graves said he was sorry to see the property destroyed. There was no talk among our party at all this time. What occurred when you got to the bridge? When we got there, just at the foot of the bridge, the Negroes dropped back, leaving our party about 10 steps in front of them. Mr. Shriver said, come men, whatever you're going to do, do it. Let us go back home and carry us to Williamsburg at once. It's getting late. Henry Moore said, I don't think you will get home tonight or to Williamsburg either. Mr. Gray said, men, don't kill us. I'll give you bond and security for any amount of money if you carry us to Williamsburg to the governor. You know we did not come here to fight you all, nor to harm you in any way, or we would not have brought this poor little child with us. During this time, some five or six were loading their guns. The others had loaded guns. They called Littleton to them. After he went to them, I followed him, and so did little George Graves. Six or seven of the Negroes then shot together at Mr. Shriver and Mr. Graves. I could not tell their names. We were all so mixed up. Mr. Shriver and Mr. Graves both fell at once. Jim Diggs tried to shoot me, but I held him until George Thomas pulled me back and he broke my hold. Then Jim shot me in the belly. I fell and was shot again by whom I do not know. During this time, little George who was among the crowd begging for his life was picked up and thrown from the bridge into the marsh and then shot. I do not know who shot him. Henry Moore said, come, let's get these bodies off the dam, meaning the bridge, and throw them overboard. Littleton, do you go and take off their overcoats? They may be of some use and see if the pockets have any money in them. They threw the bodies of Mr. Graves and the little boy into the creek and when they threw Mr. Shriver in, one said he's swimming, he's not hurt. They got a boat and some went in after Mr. Shriver. Others went on the marsh, on the side of the marsh to catch him. When they went off, I crawled into the marsh about 50 yards and got to a gut, down which I went about 25 or 30 yards. I hid myself by sinking everything except my face they came back and looked for me, seeing that I had moved, but it was night and they could not see me. 
Old Jeffrey stepped on my hand, but did not see me. Jim Diggs said, he's in that gut. It's a good place for him. The water is deeper than his head. He can't carry the load I put in him. We'll find him in the morning. I stayed in the gut about two hours and then crawled out. I heard two pass me, who went on the bridge and took away our boat and carried it to the landing at Neck of Land. Afterwards, in the same night, I crawled to the island and tried to get to a boat in which to escape, but did not find one. The next day, about 3 p.m., I got to Mr. Copeland's. After traveling along Neck of Land Creek up to the bridge at his head and thence along the main road to Mr. Copeland's, he gave me advice not to tell anybody on that side what had happened and sent me to John Cassidy's who lives on James River at Green Spring. On Wednesday morning, John Cassidy brought me to Four Mile Tree, Mr. Graves' farm on this side of the river. Mrs. Graves, the widow of Mr. J.S.A. Graves sent me on home. Who is John Cassidy, a free man of color? Did Littleton, so far as you know, have any hand in this murder? None at all, sir. When you were first carried to Neck of Land, did the Negroes there hold any court to try you all? They said on the island that they meant to carry us before their judge. Who was the judge so called? Windsor, I heard them call him so. What was the reason that they gave for killing you all? None that we heard. Giving under my hand and seal this day, 25th of October, 1862.